Hi guys, Teacher Holly here with a video for school teachers. That's right. Are you already a brick and mortar school teacher? Thinking of trying your hand at online ESL? Then you're in the right place. I myself, former school teacher, I taught kindergarten and I taught seventh grade. I know those are a little different, but hey, you know, career choices. And anyway, I have a lot of experience in the classroom and I am loving my transition to this online ESL world. I've been doing this for quite a while and it is just the best thing ever. I absolutely love it. But it is a little bit different than our time in a traditional classroom. I also have the honor and privilege of referring quite a few people to GoGo -Go Kid and helping them get hired. What's interesting is that a high percentage of the people that I have referred have actually been school teachers. Obviously, teachers are attracted to this job and they like to add it to their profile, they like to add it to their resume, they like to add it to their bank account. And so a couple of hours in the morning before they go to school, they're kind of liking that gig. But I have noticed something that's been a little bit interesting to me with my teachers who are referrals is that it is usually turning out to be a little bit harder than they thought, harder than they expected to get hired. Here's why. I think school teachers, and I'm going to put myself in that category as I am one, go into this thinking, how hard can it be? I've been doing this for 10 years. It's a couple words on a screen. How hard? It's not 30 kids in a classroom. It's one kid and it is hard. Well, it's not hard. It's just different. It's different than the traditional skills that we have brought to our classroom. And so today I have for you the number one tip you need to get hired and just succeed in this job. I'm just going to assume you already have a skill set that you're bringing to this of education, that you're already knowing that you need to be energetic and enthusiastic, have some props on hand, have some visual aids, some visual support for your student. But I'm guessing there's one thing that you didn't actually think of. Before I get to that, I want you to imagine with me for a minute that you have decided to make it your resolution as an intelligent adult to learn Russian. That's right, Russian. And you have found this great program online that you're going to try out. It's a fabulous program. It's one-on-one, -on -one, really great screens, lots of great content. It's full immersion Russian. You're going to sit in this classroom once or twice a week, and before you know it, you're going to know, know Russian. You can't wait. So you enter that digital classroom, and there's a wonderful Russian individual sitting there waiting for you, excited to see you, and they open their mouth and start speaking Russian. And that is all they speak. And they keep speaking Russian. And then when they're done, they look at you and go, uh, I don't know. You don't know. You don't know what they said. You don't know what they want. Are you supposed to say hello? What are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to order something to eat. You have no idea. It's confusing. It's overwhelming. It's intimidating. That's exactly what our students are going through in the classroom, in their digital online ESL classroom. But the problem is, is that as traditional teachers, we're coming to this with a certain paradigm. And that paradigm is the more language, the better. Talk, talk, talk. We are used to explaining things. In my kindergarten classroom, that's all I did all day was explain things. Okay, kids, now we're going to move to our math centers. In this center, we're going to work on patterns. You remember what patterns are? We would go black, red, black, red, or maybe let's do a complicated letter pattern. You're going to sort the patterns and try to read them. And then when you're done, you're going to write your own pattern, right? I would say that with lots of language to help my children understand. But in an online ESL classroom, it's flipped. You need to do almost the exact opposite. The fewer words, the better. In ESL, we call this minimal incidental language. It is crucial that we keep our language minimal. So here's your number one tip. Keep it simple. Simple. Simple, simple, simple. Your natural inclination, trust me, is going to be to talk and use lots of words, to narrate what you're doing, to explain, to go beyond. Don't. Keep it simple. That's your number one tip. Let me give you an example here, okay? So let's say your vocabulary word that you're teaching is the word ball, okay? In a normal classroom, our temptation would be, kids, today we're going to learn the word ball. Look, b-a-ball. 
Oh, ball, ball, we're going to learn ball. You know what a ball is? That round thing that we play on the playground with. We can bounce it. We can throw it. We can roll it. We can toss it. It may not even be round. It could be a different shape like a football. Who likes to watch football? Me too. We're going to work on ball today. Yay! In the online ESL classroom, none of that. Here's what you do in an online classroom. Ball 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 b all ball 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 <gasps> circle ball good good ball good job ball That's it. Did you notice I said ball and circle and good job? That was it. Nothing else. In fact, if I was a really good teacher, I would probably bring out a prop of a ball. I will not probably. I would definitely bring out a prop of a ball. I would show kids what ball is using my hands. Ball, ball. I would pantomime throwing a ball, catching a ball ball. That's all I would do. And that is the number one mistake that I see with people who are already teachers moving to an online ESL classroom. When I practice with my referrals, which I do, I try to do a video chat with them where we walk through the lesson and they practice on me. What I always, always, always see is too much talking, too much narration, even saying, now we're going to learn the word ball. Too much? Whoosh, right over our student's head. We need to keep it very, very simple. Now, that is straight across the board, every single online ESL classroom, unless you have a student that is at a higher level, who is learned, who is, already has a good command of the English language, then you can extend in other ways. You can even extend with this, sim this simple word as well, but keep it simple. Keep it simple. That is my number one tip. If you combine that tip with your already innate skills that you have, you will be surprised at how well you do in your interview and in this job. In fact, if you would like more tips like that and more help, particularly if you are a brick and mortar teacher, you've already spent some time in the classroom, I would love to help you. I'd love to meet with you in a video classroom to help you walk through this. I would love to connect with you via email or text or chat, phone, whatever. Let's connect. I'd love to help you. You can use my referral link down below. Send me an email. Use my referral code if you've already applied. Either way, remember, keep it simple. Simpler than you think. Keep it simple. Thanks. I hope that was helpful to you. Happy teaching.